Good. Yeah. You like my human tripod? No. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Cutting it on the trail. Guys, welcome to today's video where I'm gonna show you what it takes to fit 35 inch tires, this time in the rear of your vehicle. A couple people reached out and said that you need to do some serious trimming back there as well. So what I did is made an entirely separate video about it and then took the rig onto the beautiful Cleghorn Trail in Southern California to hit some pretty tough lines out there and to test the limits of the suspension's flex and if I'm rubbing anywhere so I can make those necessary adjustments, one of which is actually on the trail, as you'll see, so stay tuned. First, I'm gonna start off by lifting the GX up with the jack, supporting it on jack stands and removing the driver's side rear wheel. Next, I'm gonna start by removing this plastic inner fender. A trusted fellow GX enthusiast at Diamond Lock GX reached out to me and said that he and some friends were rubbing on this plastic part really bad and actually ended up popping off that door plastic. So really appreciate him reaching out to me to let me know that I probably would rub there. In addition, I'm also removing this piece of, of metal here that I thought, you know, when my suspension compresses, the tire is definitely gonna hit here. So I actually went as far as removing it. But as you'll see on the other side, I think a more effective strategy is just making those cuts in it and hammering it over just like we did on the pinch welds in the front. You'll see me try to completely remove the metal fender right here. It just takes so long and I don't think it has a net better result than just doing like I did here and making those cuts and hammering the metal over. I ended up not even touching all this metal so I know this is an effective method. So check out what we did here. We have all the cut metal there, like you can see. And then I started by cutting those little slats in it and then hammering them over. I think uh, that ladder method is not only quicker, but just as effective. And as you can see, I have a lot more clearance in front of the tire as well. So we're gonna go over to the passenger side and I'm gonna show you a quick version of what we just did just for repetition's sake. Cut out the plastic inner fender. I actually cleaned that up. I know there was a little notch in it. But then once you're done with that, go ahead and make some cuts into the metal and start hammering them over with a mini sledge or mallet. I actually recommend the mini sledge. The mallet didn't end up being heavy enough and I had to make some corrections. As you can see, you can get a lot more clearance just by doing those cuts and hammering them over. So that's what I ended up doing to the rest of the inner fender as well. So just take your time with this. Make and then you're just going to do that same thing throughout the entire inner fender metal. Make those cuts pound them over the metal in the back here actually ended up being surprisingly thick so a mallet wasn't the best choice I would definitely prefer to have a mini sledge so check out the results this is how it looks and uh, maybe all of you may not agree this is pretty but it looks totally fine from the outside and it clears the tires so in my opinion that is a success now I'm trying to figure out what to do with this plastic piece back here, what's left of the mud guard. I was considering keeping it just because I don't want to take too much off the cart. Just get rid of it, you guys. You'll see me on the trail. I have to make trims to it just to get through it without rubbing like crazy. So again, save yourself some time. Just remove that. Now let's get these wheels back on the GX and let's get out and hit the trail. And right after we pulled off on Cleghorn Road, I started airing down the tires using the Morflate system. We also used it on my buddy's 1993 Suzuki Sidekick Stick Shift. It was really cool to see this thing go. My buddy is new to off-roading and it was really fun to watch him get to know his vehicle and watch the capability of a two inch lifted Sidekick on 29 inch tires. So we had a look at those power line obstacles and thought they were a bit too gnarly for what we wanted to do today, but maybe we'll come back to them later. Stick around. As we approached our first obstacle, a dirt bike rider thought he'd give it a go as well, and these were the results. 
<laughs> Not exactly a good omen for what I was about to try in my SUV. And if you want to know how to avoid snapping a CV on 35s, when you start bouncing like that, let off. Do not stay in it. Find a better line and get to the top instead of breaking stuff. And those were some pretty deep holes. Let's see what the little Suzuki sidekick can do. And as I said before, I am rubbing really hard on those stupid mud guards I should have removed earlier. I thought this obstacle might get me to full tuck so we can get a good idea of where we're at. So let's give it a go. Gas it. Yeah. Hey track baby. There you go. Track, there you go. Okay, the rubbing is not serious. It's just on the stupid mud guard that I should have cut off yesterday. <laughs> so crunchy. Oh. See that big boulder? Yeah. about this much room. Aside from the incessant rubbing, I was having a great time up here. The 35s were performing awesome. All the vehicle features I had installed aftermarket, like the front trail cam and stuff like that, were coming in clutch for every single obstacle. It was going super great. And uh, on stuff that I whacked my sliders on last time I was up here with my 33 inch tires, I barely got a little scrape on them this time. This tire, right here. It was around this point where I got tired of the rubbing and was ready to do something about it. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it. I am definitely testing the limits of my $500 solar power system. I think this will work? Yeah. No. Ah, yeah. Dude, I'm cutting it on the trail, yes. Look at, you see where it's been rubbing? It's all that crazy noise is just coming from there. None of this stuff, none of this crap is rubbing. Haters. Uh, should I cut this whole thing off or is it gonna flap in the wind? rubbing on this piece right here on this like body pinch weld mm -hmm. so i'm gonna freaking hammer it over i think that's it let's see if that at least gave us enough clearance to get through the trail without being constantly annoyed I know. 
That's crazy. Yep. All right. Wait. It's a bad line. Passenger tire on the bank on the right side. Yeah. Ride that thing to the left. Just bump it a little bit. You got it. Okay, you're crazy. That little side you kick was it. turning out to be a weapon. It was super fun watching him do his thing out there. Now let's see how the GX does plowing straight through these ruts. Yeah. And at this point, there was much less rubbing anywhere, if at all. So, so far, so good. I just gotta do the worst line. <laughs> all right, let's see it. That's just not fair. Up ahead, there were some deeper ruts and some harder lines to test out the flex on. So let's get right into it. Now we're gonna stop off the trail for a bit and cook ourselves some steaks and make some coffee. I could totally understand wanting to have a good time up in nature. I totally cannot understand leaving your trash out for others to pick up, but whatever. Let's just get ourselves a camp stove set up and get to cooking those steaks. It's like a few a slice of butter. So now it's time to head down the trail after having a little food and getting some coffee in us. Maybe we could find some hard lines to hit on the way back. I was a little hesitant to hit this obstacle at first, but it looked like the best candidate to fully flex out the suspension on all four corners and to ensure that all of my fitment modifications for the 35 inch tires worked. Yeah, keep pushing. Yeah. A quick note, you're at much higher risk of breaking a CV on 35 inch tires, especially on stock gears. When you see that sky like right here, don't immediately hammer the gas. Bring it down nice and easy. Oh, did you see that wheel lift? I was like, wait, hello. Dude. That was rowdy, man. Good thing you said something. Oh, my. I cannot believe I made it up. That was it, man. That was 
good. You ever done anything like that in this car? No, nothing like that. She had a great. I was really surprised. I could keep up with you just a little bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> oh, she's good. Tides what? Two inch uh, suspension lift. Some all terrain tires. That's about it. That's it. That's it. Manual, too. Oh, yeah. All right, thanks for coming along with us, you guys. I hope you had a good time. I didn't rub on the metal up here at all. All this metal is really clean. No touching or anything on the pinch weld that we hammered back. I gotta put this back up somehow, because it came out. On the back side, the only issue we had were these mud flaps, uh, or what was left of them. And we cut them out with a solar power system powering a grinder, a seven amp grinder. All clean metal, none of it was touched by the tire. Same up here. So I'm really happy that I can just bring a grinder out on the trail and also save some money by not purchasing, you know, the lithium ion battery powered power tools. I could just bring a normal corded tool out on the trail. Anyways, hope you had fun wheeling with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you in the next one.